national address. Your Excellency, sir. Asante sana, please let's be seated. All protocols observed, ladies and gentlemen, all Kenyans, let me begin by wishing each and every one of you a very happy Jamuhuri Day. Today, indeed, I am delighted and privileged to host the 57th Jamuhuri Day celebrations here at Uhuru Gardens, the People's Gardens. This is the exact place where the Union Jack of the British colonizer was lowered and our national flag hoisted on midnight of the 12th of December 1963. And as we hoisted our national flag here at this People's Garden in Nairobi, one of our heroes by the name of Kisoi Munyao raised the same flag at midnight of Independence Day at the peak of Mount Kenya, this being the highest point in our land where we wanted to declare to one and all that Kenya was finally independent. The joy of December 12th is that we celebrate two critical milestones of our independence journey. And I say so because the transfer of power from the British to our founding fathers took place in three steps over a period of 18 months. The first step was achieved after the May 27th election of 1963. This election ushered in our self-rule on June the 1st of 1963, and with this step, the first Prime Minister of Kenya, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, became the head of government. But the Queen of England still remained the head of state, and this meant that we were free, but not yet totally free. Indeed, six months later, the second milestone was achieved when we gained independence on December 12th, 1963. On this day, here, we hoisted our national flag and played our national anthem for the first time. And as we did this, we were reminded that our national flag is not just a piece of cloth decorated with ink or some sentimental display of colors without history. Our flag is a symbol of the national wounds and scars that we bear from the Liberation War. It is a picture of the battles that were fought, those that were won, and indeed those that we lost. And, beca and because the ultimate act of every great warrior is to lay down his weapon, the shield and spears on our national flag symbolize victory. But even with independence, a national flag and a national anthem, the Queen continued to serve as Kenya's head of state. It took us one full year to get to the third and final milestone of our liberation. And this happened on December 12, 1964, when the Queen vacated her position as head of state. And with this act, Kenya transitioned into a full republic or Jamuhuri, making the total liberation of our country. On this memorable day in 1964, we returned to this garden to launch the Republic of Kenya and inaugurate its first president. And on the same day, the Governor General became the last expatriate occupant of Government House here in Nairobi. To commemorate this change of guard, the first president planted a Mogumo tree at the exact spot where our flag had been hoisted at midnight of December 12, 1963. That 57-year-old tree still stands tall and proud to my right as a symbol of our struggle that dates back over a hundred years.
This December 12th is therefore a joyous day for Kenya because we mark the 58th anniversary of our independence and the 57th celebration of our becoming a republic. And as we mark this historic day, some will tell you that history is meaningless, unnecessary, useless and irrelevant to the concerns of the present. I beg to differ. History provides invaluable lessons to be learned and gives context to the present. By looking back, we are better able to look forward. Learning from the past means that we can build on its good, avoid its mistakes, and most importantly, it is a constant reminder of the ugly, so that even as we forgive, we must never forget. Fellow Kenyans, why did our founding fathers choose Uhuru Gardens as the place to celebrate Independence Day in 1963 and the Republic status in 1964? Why did they want generations to memorize about our history, the untold atrocities visited upon our people, and all the evil associated with colonial rule? This ground on which we stand today, were at one time also known as the Langata concentration camp. During the Liberation War, this concentration camp was the most, was the most notorious clearing, clearing house for our liberation fighters. In fact, it is estimated that up to 10,000 of our gallant and most feared liberators were confined in this camp at some point or another, and most of them did not survive the wrath of the colonizers. Indeed, Langata camp has been described in some books of history as resembling the Nazi camps in Germany, both in its psychological warfare and its methods of brutality. In fact, using quack scientists, the colonizers argued that devotion to the cause of Mau Mau was a mental illness, and the only way to deal with it was by creating mass detention camps where shock therapy and torture could be administered as a cure. And that was part of the logic they used to create the Langata concentration camp where we are seated today. So by creating this garden as a place of remembrance, our founding fathers wanted generations to recall the darkness of our colonial past, but not to be stuck in the pessimism that dark memories can breed. They wanted us to turn darkness into positive energy, the way they did it in concentration camps. Instead of breaking down in the camps and breaking down because of colonial brutality, they only became stronger. But there are other reasons also why our founding fathers brought us to this place of national remembrance. Each time we gather here, they wanted us to face our national fears and demons with courage, more so because no condition can be considered permanent. They wanted us never to question in the dark decisions we made in the light, mainly because the long walk to freedom was a walk of faith. Most of our liberators had no idea whether or when freedom would come. In fact, many confessed in their memoirs that many times they had doubt that their cause would ever see the light of day. And although their walk to freedom was long and hard, the only thing that sustained them was the burning conviction of the righteousness of their cause. They were troubled on every side, but never distressed. They were perplexed, but they never fell into despair. So fellow Kenyans, when we congregate at this place of remembrance, we are all called on to renew the soul of our nation. We are called to appreciate the pain felt and sacrifices made 
by those who went before us. The fallen soldiers and heroes buried in unmarked graves in prisons and camps all over our country. And that is why the project under construction behind us was initiated. Apart from being a place of remembrance and healing, this place will be, an, will be an arena where the past, the present, and the future will converge. When Kenyans walk through the Heroes Boulevard, their spirits will be edified by the sacrifice our liberators made. And at the end of the boulevard, there will be the tomb of the unknown warrior, a warrior whose name we do not know, although he died in battle for our country, and a warrior whose mother let him go, and both mother and son sacrificed so that we can be free. Once completed, this place of history will rekindle memories of our armed struggle and also the good, the bad, as well as the ugly of our history. At the Hall of Legends, it will bring alive our legendary ancestors including Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, Mikatalili Wamenza, Koitalela Arab Samoe, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Nabongo Mumia, Laibon Lenana, Deden Kimadi, among many others. At the Tunnel of Martyrs, we will have a solemn memorial to each and every Kenyan who has lost their lives in the many watershed moments this will range from the first to the second world war all the way to the victims of the post-election violence of 2008. In the rope gallery of this museum, a named rope will be dedicated to every one of the 1,090 heroic souls that were hanged during the colonial era. And at the moment of darkness gallery, we shall display the history of our country, of our lowest moments, the moments that we regret, but are part of our history. But not all the galleries will be sad news. The Hall of Innovation in this museum will celebrate the brilliant, game-changing ideas produced by Kenyans. This hall will speak to the future and how our past has guided it and the hall, again behind me, marked by a pointed spear, will characterize our latest exploits, our moments of great hope and national pride, and our bold path into the future. So fellow Kenyans, this place will be a book of history, an illumination of the future, weaved in hope, written in pictures, sculptures, and historic artifacts. And although the place of remembrance will also be a place of pain, it will also be an altar for historical forgiveness. As Kenyans walk through the galleries of the heroes and legends, they must forgive those who trespassed against them. However, they must also heed the call from our founding father when he said, we will forgive them, but we will never forget. We must forgive our transgressors but we must never forget their name. Fellow Kenyans, finally our founding fathers brought us to this garden of remembrance to teach us that nation building is not a sprint, it is a relay. No single person or group of persons can make this undertaking alone. Liberation was achieved because it was a product of teamwork. And it must be recorded that the Founding Fathers were not a team because they worked together. They were a team because they reinforced each other and had deep respect and trust for one another. They taught us that nation building is like building a house. This endeavor is a product of teamwork and not individualism. They built a firm foundation for a prosperous Kenya. Others amongst them built the walls and others roofed the house. Everyone had a role to play and no role 
was greater or lesser than the other. The same is true today as it was then. We are building a house called Kenya and there is no place for one manism in this project. It is the collective work of every able-bodied Kenyan. And yes, we will disagree at times, but in our disagreements, we must always remain respectful. In fact, respectful disagreements are what lead to reconciliation. More so, because when we disagree, it is a sign that we are making progress. The making of a nation and the building of a house are a living process. They cannot be static and must be dynamic. Errors are made sometimes and re renovations must correct them after the house is completed. Indeed, in the recent past, in December of 1991, it was established that the one-party system was a design error in our nationhood and the advancement of the Republic had outlived its usefulness and we made renovations and changed the system. In 2007, we ran into another defect in our nation building project and we discovered that the politics of exclusion in which the winner takes all was not good for our country and we were bold enough to change our constitution and expand the executive in order to accommodate the excluded. And indeed, when the former Prime Minister, Right Honorable Raila Odinga and I shook hands on March 8th of 2018, it was because we saw a crack on the wall of our nation. We had run two elections that costed the country in excess of one trillion shillings. These losses made us see that we were staring at a nation divided right in the middle. But because we had disagreed respectfully, we knew that this was a mark of progress, and though it was difficult, the necessity, the reason, and recognition that we as Kenyans need each other, nation before self, as our forefathers had taught us, to come together reinforced our resolve. Therefore, again, I will continue to say that we need to come together and mend the crack on the wall of our nation, and this, I believe, is what necessitated the First Amendment to our Constitution. And although it encountered some legal obstacles, I say again today that BBI is just a dream deferred. One day, someday, it will happen. Because, because just as the country cannot survive ethnic majoritarianism and exclusion, just in the same breath, it cannot survive unfair and skewed representation. This is a design defect and we must fix it. Fellow Kenyans, the garden of the people therefore is not just a place of remembrance. It was gifted to us as a place where generations shall tell stories of where we have come from, where we are, and indeed where we are going. It is an arena of truth narrated before God, verified by history, and reinforced by the acts of our founding fathers and each and every one of us as we move through life. And it is a convergence point between our past, our present. It must also, therefore, be our guide for the future. Allow me, as I conclude, to give a thought towards that future. If the Asian Tigers were at the same level of development as Kenya in 1963, and I remind Kenyans that our country, our nation, actually lent South Korea money to implement its development plan in 1963. The question we therefore must ask ourselves is what happened? Why were we unable to develop as fast as those did? This future did not happen because we failed to plan for it. 
The future evaded us because we failed to imagine it. And I say so because imagination is more powerful than knowledge. For the past to have an impact on our future, we must constantly imagine and reimagine it. Indeed, as we envision the future, we are also reminded that in eight years' time, our economic blueprint, that is the Kenya Vision 2030, will have run its course. By then, Kenya will be home to a projected 63 million citizens. And as Kenya turns 100 in the year 2063, we will be home to 100 million citizens. For us to secure the elusive shared prosperity and intergenerational equity, we must be bold in our imagination of Kenya at 100. But our imagination cannot follow the popular path. It must follow the bold path. And indeed, Vision 2063 must be a bold imagination of what Kenya will be at 100 years. The solemn duty of framing how this vision looks is the task of our generation. Indeed, as our children will walk through the boulevard of heroes in this park and play in the pavilion of reflection, what account of ourselves will we have left in this unedited place of history? It must be written in this unedited book of history that we chose the bold path over the popular path. Indeed, as it is said, the lion is not the strongest animal in the savanna, neither is it the biggest, neither is it the shrewdest, but it is the boldest, and that is why it is the king. Indeed, it is for this very same reason that it is said that an army of sheep led by a lion can defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. The future of Kenya, inspired by the past and present, must be about a brave imagination. That is why today I congratulate the young men and women of the 19th Battalion of the Kenya Rifles to whom I have presented the presidential and regimental colors today. We must celebrate our defense forces because when they go to war in the defense of our borders, they know too well that they will either return hoisting our national flag or return wrapped in our national flag. This takes boldness and dedication. So fellow Kenyans, as I now end my address, I want to remind of a promise I made on the 20th of October 2021 where I directed the Ministry of Energy to fast track the implementation of the recommendations of the Presidential Task Force on Power Purchase Agreements. I am pleased to note that the pathway to reduce the cost of electricity by over 30% is on course. In honor of this pledge to the nation and response to the concerns of the high cost of electricity raised both by individual, customers and enterprises, I am pleased to announce to the nation that the reduction of the cost of electricity will be implemented in two tranches of 15% each, with the first 15% achieved through initial actions focusing on system and commercial losses, and this will be reflected in people's bills in December of this year. A further 15% reduction will happen in the first quarter of 2022. In realizing the second tranche of reduction in power bills, I note that the Ministry of Energy and other government departments have initiated engagement with independent power producers aimed at renegotiation of power purchase agreements so as to give our country better value for money for our consumers. I urge the power producers to demonstrate goodwill as we seek to make our energy sector a greater catalyst of our national development. So as we move to the new year 2022, I would wish to leave you with the words of our founding president as he wished our new republic a Merry Christmas 57 years ago. And in it he urged our good men and women to be of service to their fellow countrymen. 
And indeed, his New Year message was, and I quote, let everyone who is educated teach others to read and write. Let every man who is help healthy help a man who is sick. Let every man who has work find some prospect for a man that is poor and not employed. Let service be our inspiration for the future, end of quote. And with this message, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2022. Asante ni sana wenzangu. Leo nimesema sitaongea mengi, juzi nilipata nafasi kule bunge ya kutaja mambo mbali mbali ambayo serikali ambayo inaiongoza tumeweza kuyatenda. Siku ya leo ni siku ya kukumbuka mashujaa wale ambao walipigania uhuru wa taifa hili letu la Kenya, wale ambao wamepigania demokrasi ya taifa hili letu la Kenya. Na hapa ambapo tulipo ni pahali ambapo patasaidia sisi kama wa Kenya kujikumbusha mema na mazuri ambayo tumeweza kuyatenda yale mabaya ambayo tumepitia na ambayo tuwatakikana tusome ndiyo tusirudie na pia yale maovu ambayo yametendeka ambaye lazima kama inchi tujikinge na tuhakikishe ya kwamba hatuwezi tena kurudi kwa umwagikaji wa damu ningependa nichukue fursa hii kushukuru wote ambao tumefanya kazi pamoja na wao katika huu mradi wa kujenga hii Uhuru Gardens nianze kwanza kwa kushukuru jeshi letu kupitia wewe CDF na, na wenzako jeshi limejikaza kabisa pamoja na wengine na tujue ya kwamba hata ule mtu ambaye amechora na wale ambao wamekuwa ma engineers wote ni wananchi na watoto wa jamhuri hii yetu ya Kenya na tunawashukuru na tunasema ya kwamba mbele ya mwezi wa ine mwaka ujao tutarudi hapa kufungua museum ambaye iko hapa na kufungua hii uwanja kikamili kwa wale wote wananchi wote watoto wa shule bila malipo waweze kutembea wajionee historia yao wajionee pahali ambapo wametoka wajifunze wajifunze kutoka babu zetu na waweze kujua pahali ambapo wangependa kupeleka nchi hii ningefanya makosa kama singemshukuru moja kati yetu hapa ambaye tumekuwa tukiongea na yeye kutoka miezi karibu kumi na ine wakati nilianza hii project ya Uhuru Gardens ambaye tumetembea na yeye hapa sana sana na amenipatia mawaidha mheshimiwa Raila Odinga nasema asante sana kwa yale ambayo umetusaidia kutenda mwanakana hawa wazee wanataka uwaongeleshe kuja uwasalimie jameni Excellency Rais wa Jamhuri wa Kenya Uhuru Mwigai Kinyata Mama wa Taifa ya Jamhuri ya Kenya Mama Ngina Kinyata Mama Magret Kinyata Naibu Rais viongozi wote mfika hapa siku ya leo Harambe 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 Nimesema hayo kwa sababu yale ndio yalifanyika hapa miaka hamsini na 8 iliyopita Your Excellency I have only two things that I want to tell Kenyans today First way is true what you have said here about this grounds 
but the Kenyans must also know that this ground was not chosen for no reason. One, there was a motion in Parliament, and I see the speakers here, then called Legico, about the site. Then there were three sites. One was along what was called Princess Elizabeth Highway, now Uhuru Highway, and that was Uhuru Park. The other one was called Mitchell Park, which is today called Jamhuri Park or ASK grounds. This one here was called a, a open ground next to Nairobi Dam. This one was chosen because it was a, a concentration camp where, as the president has said, freedom fighters were tortured. Like they were tortured in Hitler's Auschwitz and Buchenwald. Here, next to the Western Hotel, which is part of this ground, in Langata Primary School, there are torture chambers which have been preserved by the Museum of Kenya for people to know where we are coming from. Your Excellency, what you've done here is great. I'd ask you when you went to Namibia to go and look at what they have done. When you came back, you told me we'll do better. We'll actually come up with the best in Africa. How are we going to remember our past? There are those who say, forget about the past. We want to look at the future. The past is very important because if you don't really look at the past, your legs will repeat the same mistakes made in the past. And here, Your Excellency, you say that you want history unedited here. People will come to know who Wayaki Wahinga was, who Haridhuku was, and so many of those are our heroes here. Many of Kenyan parties have worked here, historians, geologists, anthropologists, uh, uh, political scientists, architects, engineers have worked here and people are going to be surprised at what you've done here. It shows your vision for this nation, for our country. So we, therefore, Your Excellency, I want to congratulate you in front of fellow Kenyans here for the work that you've done that will only be recognized many years after you left office. So we congratulate you. And this land had been grabbed. But those land grabbers would not see an open space and stop grabbing them. But you managed to retrieve it back for the benefit of our people. And it's going to remain truly Uhuru Gardens where we also are going to bury our heroes and remember them for posterity. I thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Ahaya. Kwa hayo machache na mengi, mimi na watakia wa Kenya kila laheri. Mungu wa wabariki. Mungu wa wabariki taifa letu la Kenya. Tuwe na Christmas njema. Tuwe na mwaka umpia wa amani Majaliwa ya mwenyezi mungu Tutaonana tena Asante ni sana kwa herini Thank you very much Asante sana mweshimi wa rais Kwa heshima mweshimi wa rais naomba tuketi kwa kifupi Kwa heshima mweshimi wa rais Naomba uniruhusu ni walike wa chache Utakao watunza mendali bali bali Head of public service kindly if we could continue Thank you sir